What is up guys? Welcome back for another draft league format analysis. Today we are of course doing Tapu Koko. If you missed the last episode, be sure to go check it out. I'll leave a link to it in the description down below. Also, uh, if you make it to the end of the video, you will see which Pokemon we are covering on the next episode. So if you're really hyped to see a Pokemon, you can always uh, just stick around, wait to see at the end of the video what's going to be covered on the next one. So uh, for right now, of course, like I said last time, we are going to be doing these in three episode installments. The next one is going to be a battle between the two teams, two past draft league teams that were very successful. We're going to re be replacing one of their Pokemon with one of the two that we covered in the two previous episodes, either being Tapu Lele or Tapu Koko in this case. So let's just dump, jump right into it. Tapu Koko's uh, typing, we're going to cover that first because I didn't do that in the last episode. But here we have a an electric fairy, which is a new typing, uh, which is very, very good because... If you look at its resistance pool, it resists fighting, flying, electric, bug, dark, and is immune to dragon, while only having a weakness to poison and ground types. So that is, that's pretty skewed toward uh, resisting rather than being weak to. And if we look at its stat distribution now, we have a 70 HP stat, 115 attack, which is very usable, 85 um, defense, 95 special attack, 75 special defense, uh, being its lowest stat except for HP, and of course it's blistering 130 speed, and that's what really makes this Pokemon shine, guys. In Draft League format, one of the most sought after elements for a team is a fast electric type, and Tapu Koko completes that perfectly. On top of that, if we look at its notable moves, uh, Thunderbolt, Dazzling Gleam, Volt Switch, and U-Turn, so it doesn't have to be trapped in uh, by Pokemon like Dugtrio, for example. It also gets access to Grass Knot to be able to hit ground types. Uh, Brave Bird, so that it can hit things like, let's say, uh, Roserade, Mega Venusaur. Uh, it also gets Roost and Psych Up. I wanted to put on the notable moves because uh, if your opponent has a boosted Pokemon in front of you, you can always come in, always be faster than it, unless it's, of course, like a Dragon Dance or an Agility set, uh, and then Psych Up to boost up alongside it. Very useful for Pokemon such as uh, Reuniclus, slower Pokemon, basically, uh, that's set up in front of you. can also be useful for Suicune, uh, anything like that. Let's jump into some notable calcs. Uh, the first one I wanted to cover is something that I already just mentioned, being Mega Venusaur. So, uh, 252 attack, uh, adamant nature, life orb, Tapu Koko's Brave Bird to a max HP 220 defense. I just put 220. Uh, Mega Venusaur does 60 to 71%. That's a guaranteed two hit KO. If it comes in after uh, rocks and gets hit with a wild charge, it will die to a Brave Bird uh, almost 100% of the time. So that's very that's something to note. Next up, we have, of course, uh, Grass Knot that I mentioned before, being hit, able to hit ground types. Uh, 252 special attack, non boosting nature, life orb, Taku, uh, Tapu Koko's Grass Knot to a uh, max HP, no Spadef hip out on because I just wanted to put it that way so you guys can see uh, what it's pretty much max roll is. Of course, we don't have the life orb when we don't have the boosting nature. We don't, we do have the life orb, excuse me, but we don't have the boosting nature. But it, even at that, it still does 85 to 100%. That is a 43.8% chance to Oko after Stealth Rocks. Once again, meaning that if it comes in on Dazzling Gleam, it dies to the following hit. Zero attack, Naive Nature, Life Orb, Tapu Koko's U-Turn to a Pokemon that would normally be able to switch into it pretty decently. 252 HP, 252 max defense, Celebi takes half, 52 to 63. It's a guaranteed two at KO, so not even that can switch in on you because you're able to Volt Turn out, or U-Turn out rather, and uh, get off a huge hit before it gets a chance to recover. Then we have uh, max special attack, Life Orb, Tapu Koko's Hidden Power Ice to a max HP, no spit F Lando, this is the um, the bulky Lando that you're used to seeing, does 87 to 103, that means it's a 93.8% chance to Oko after Stealth Rocks. So you can run, run HP Ice pretty easily uh, if that's the ground type that you need to check in your matchup. Then we have max HP, uh, sorry, max special attack, excuse me, once again, uh, top, uh, no life orb, Tapu Koko's Thunderbolt to a Charizard Y, Mega Charizard Y in uh, electric terrain does 105 to 125. Why am I mentioning this? Because it's a super effective coverage. It's because looking at Tapu Koko's special attack stat of 95, you would think it doesn't hit as hard as it as it does. Uh, but because of the electric terrain, if we look at another calc really quickly, quick comparison, 252 special attack Mega Manectric, so it's basically on par, it doesn't have a boosting nature, to 0 HP, 4 speed F, 
Mega Charizard Y does 90 to 107, so there's a chance that it doesn't knock it out, and they can invest correctly to make sure that it doesn't, whereas Tapu Koko's is a lot more skewed toward being able to knock out Mega Charizard Y. So you can see, even though Mega Nectric has a base 135 special attack stat, it is, uh, sorry, I think it's one, it might be 135 or 130, I forget which one, I think it's 135, it's not able to guarantee knockout Charizard Y, while Tapu Koko with his base 95 special attack is. So just to give you an idea of how much of a difference that that electric terrain makes. Next up, we're going to be looking at checks and counters. So a good one that I put here, uh, first one we're going to be covering is Gudra. Now you might be thinking, well, Tapu Koko is a fairy. Yes, but Assault Vest, Gudra with no Spit F investment, just uh, max special attack, modest, um, with max HP. Only takes about 25% from the... Uh, the Dazzling Gleam, it's also a very good switch into its electric moves because of course it is a dragon type and it can hit Tapu Koko back really hard with Sludge Wave. Uh, another one that we did mention for Tapu Lele, this is also an excellent, it's probably one of the best checks uh, or counter completely to Ka Tapu Koko is Alolan Marowak. Has Lightning Rod so it doesn't get affected by the electric coverage, um, it's resistant to the Fairy type stab uh, and none of its coverage really hits it that hard. So Alolan Marowak is a great, great check. Uh, Ferrothorn, another great one. HP Fire doesn't do that much, um, even from Life Orb. And Ferrothorn can uh, hit back on Tapu Koko pretty hard because of Gyro Ball, because of the power that it has if a Tapu Koko is running, of course, max speed. And once again, another one that we covered yesterday, but Bronzong, also a very, very good check to Tapu Koko. Max Spidef takes uh, not that much from Thunderbolt, honestly. So you're able to switch in pretty decently well, and once again, Gyro Ball is doing a lot. So a Life Orb variant after two hits has a chance to go down to that Gyro Ball. Even though it's neutral, it's very, very powerful, so there is that. Then we have good partners, strong psychic and fighting types. So I wanted to make a point that Tapu Koko has a lot of trouble with uh, good specially defensive walls. Um, it's, it's notably, Chansey, Blissey, things like that. Uh, Mega Gallade is a Pokemon that would be very good to pair up with Tapu Koko. Its speed stat allows it to uh, function well with it as well. Uh, it also resists uh, one of the typings that Tapu Koko is weak to, being poison. Alright, now you see, people make mistakes sometimes. And I'm about to make another one in a second, but... Uh, for some reason, at the time of recording this, I was convinced that Heracross and uh, Mega Gallade uh, resist poison, when that's not the case. Fighting types do not resist poison, it's the other way around. Uh, poison resists fighting, but anyway, uh, please forgive me for this one, guys. Ignore it. Um, they're still great partners, by the way, Mega Gallade and Heracross, which I'm, which I'm about to talk about. Ignore the part about me saying that it resists poison, it doesn't. Uh, but the fact that it gets Earthquake and stuff like that, you can keep. Anyway, just uh, please don't destroy me in the comments. Thank you. Bye-bye. Uh, another one is Heracross. Heracross actually resists Poison and Ground, so it pretty much takes on anything that Tapu Koko can't and can hit it back pretty hard, too. Uh, it can hit Ground types and Poison types pretty, pretty well uh, because of its coverage, such as Earthquake for Poisons. Uh, then we have uh, regular Metagross is also a very good Pokemon to pair with Tapu Koko. Of course, uh, you do want potentially a steel type with Tapu Koko because of the poison weakness. You're going to be seeing a lot more poison types drafted uh, from here to the end of Gen 7. Uh, then you might want something off the ground as well. Uh, we did cover three Pokemon that are grounded, but uh, if you want to complete a Volt Turning Core, then you might want to pair up Tapu Koko with another fast Pokemon like Tornadus Therian. Uh, a great Pokemon to take down Mega Venusaur if you don't want to necessarily run Brave Bird uh, on that given week. Uh, just flying types in general, uh, check the thing that Tapu Koko hates the most, which is, uh, poison and grass types. Uh, that typing is excellent for checking, uh, Koko absolutely 100% of the time, and Tornadus is a great partner. Uh, so is Staraptor. Staraptor also gets U-turn, and, uh, it's a very powerful wall breaker. You might need that for the physical walls as well, so Staraptor fits that role. And then, of course, like we said before, bulky steel types such as Skarmory. Uh, able to soak up those poison and ground hits. It's not affected by ground. And finally, we have a Scavalier. If you want something of a lower point value, a Scavalier is definitely something worth looking at because um, it pursue traps bulky psychics, uh, gets access to knockoff. It has pretty much the same coverage that um, that Heracross does. 
Uh, it doesn't resist ground, but it takes it pretty well because of its great defense stats. So, a Scavalier, a great steel type if you're looking into the lower tiers of your league and you need something of a lower point value. That's definitely something to look at. And uh, that's pretty much going to wrap it up for Tapu Koko, guys. Next episode, of course, we will be doing the uh, third best of the Tapus, in my opinion, uh, Tapu Bulu. Uh, I ordered them in from best to worst, uh, in my opinion. Mens disagrees with me, uh, but we'll see his video, which should be coming out at around the same time as this one. So that's, uh, again, going to do it. If you did enjoy, make sure to leave a like down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to catch the battle between Tapu Koko and Tapu Lele on the next episode, and I will see you guys later. Ciao!